Let's say you watched my DNS filtering video. Maybe you even dipped a toe in the cloud DNS pool, something like NextDNS or AdGuard DNS. Maybe you want full wizard mode and installed PyHole on a Raspberry Pi. But if you didn't take any measures, well, your boring little home network is still wide open to advertisers, trackers, app developers, and IoT devices like smart TVs. Just like I said before, they're stuffing your devices with ads and siphoning your data while your ISP quietly slurps up your DNS traffic like a raccoon digging through your dumpster. A beautiful mental image, I know. Today I'm going to show you how to build your very own DNS filtering system using a Raspberry Pi and AdGuard Home. It works on every device in your house, doesn't need a subscription, and blocks a shocking amount of garbage. If you want to collect all of the achievement badges, you can also install Unbound, a recursive DNS resolver, also free. I'm having a little deja vu here. Let's do this. Welcome back to Dad Explains Everything. Recently, I showed you how to load PyHole on a Raspberry Pi in under 20 minutes. It wasn't just a speed run, as it was complete with validation steps and testing along the way. This video, same idea, even faster, even easier. If you haven't watched my DNS filtering explainer yet, consider checking it out. It lays out all the filtering levels from on-device to router-based, from cloud to self-hosted. I asked you to vote on PyHole versus AdGuard Home, and you voted for both? Classic. The PyHole video is linked below, and this is the video for AdGuard Home. Which you think is better is completely subjective. I find AdGuard Home a little easier to set up and easier to add block lists to. Its native support for encrypted upstream resolvers is also a plus. Finally, I think it's better in households that need parental controls. On the PyHole side, I prefer the dashboard. I also think that the management of lists by client groups is a killer feature in households with more than one user. If you have two Raspberry Pis, because you're patiently waiting for the dual Pi redundancy videos, then I encourage you to load PyHole on one and AdGuard Home on the other. Try them both out. Today, you're going to install Raspberry Pi OS, install AdGuard Home, configure it, test it, and then add Unbound. Optional, but recommended. And yes, you can absolutely do all of this even if you've never touched Linux before. Still not confident? Viewers of all different experience levels completed over 400 installs of PyHole in two weeks using my other tutorial. If they can do it, you can do it. What's more, if you get stuck, I'll even help. What are dads for? Let's get started. I've got a helpful worksheet linked in the video description below. I recommend printing it out as there are things that you'll want to write down during this process. I've even left spaces for the entries. Printing may be passe, but it's nice to cross things off as you go. I would also leave it on screen because you can copy and paste all of the stuff that you'd otherwise have to type. I've tried to make this as easy as possible, but sometimes things happen. If anything goes sideways, drop me a comment and I'll try to help everyone that asks for it. And while you technically don't need to watch this video if you have the worksheet, it does make it way easier to see what you're supposed to be looking at and to verify that everything is going as it should. Unlike the last worksheet, I've turned off comments on the new one so as to not make printing any more lengthy than it needs to be. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to add them to the comments of this video below. With that out of the way, we're really getting started now. First, you're going to need some hardware. In order to use this tutorial as is, you'll need a Raspberry Pi 3B or better, and a wired Ethernet connection is recommended. You'll need a micro SD card, 8 gigabytes or larger. You'll need a micro SD reader or an SD reader with a micro SD adapter. You'll need a regular computer or laptop to flash the SD card. And you'll need admin access to your router if you want to use AdGuard Home automatically across your network. Step one is to flash Raspberry Pi OS onto the micro SD card. To do this, you'll need to download and install the Raspberry Pi Imager from raspberrypi.com onto your computer. You can follow the link on the worksheet. Once installed, launch the Raspberry Pi Imager. It's a guided process and the first prompt is device. Here you'll select the type of Raspberry Pi you're going to use. Next is OS, where you'll select Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit. Next is storage. You'll need your SD card in the reader and the reader attached to your computer. You will select the micro SD card. Next is customization, with the first entry being hostname. Here you'll enter a hostname, AdGuard1 in my case, and you will record the hostname on the printed worksheet. Next, there's localization. Here you'll select your country's capital city, time zone, and keyboard layout. 
Then in user, you will create a username, NetServe in my case, and a password. You'll record the username and password on your printed worksheet. Next is Wi-Fi. I would skip this because you're using wired ethernet, unless you're ignoring my recommendation, in which case you'll add the SSID and Wi-Fi password. Then there's remote access. You will toggle enable SSH to on and set it to using password authentication. Next is Raspberry Connect, which you will disable. You'll then write the SD card, which took me about six minutes, and then verify, which took me about four. Your times will vary. When it's done, eject the card. Now, insert the card into the Raspberry Pi, plug in Ethernet, and power it on. After you've given the Pi a couple minutes to boot, you will find its IP. You can do this via your router's client list, or you can ping the host name from step four. Record this IP address on your printed worksheet. Step two, updating your Raspberry Pi. For this, you're going to connect to your Raspberry Pi via Secure Shell, or SSH. To do this, you'll need to open a terminal window. On a Windows computer, you press the Windows and R keys. When the run prompt comes up, you'll type CMD and press Enter. A command prompt window will appear. In it, you'll type SSH followed by a space, then the username from step one, number six, an at sign, and the IP address from the end of step one. It will look something like this. You'll be prompted for a password, and you'll enter the one that you created in step one, number six. After that, you'll copy paste and execute the following statements, one at a time, from the worksheet. And now you have an updated Raspberry Pi with DNS utilities loaded on it. Step three, give the Raspberry Pi a static IP address. In order to be reliably reachable, you will need to make sure that your Raspberry Pi does not have its IP address dynamically change. To do this, you can either reserve the Pi's IP in your router's DHCP maintenance, usually by creating a DHCP reservation, or converting an existing DHCP lease into a reservation. This is the preferred method for this tutorial. The alternative is to set a static IP address in NMCLI. This is outside the scope of this tutorial, but I can provide assistance in the comments if anyone wants to go this route. Step four, install the latest AdGuard Home. Here you will start AdGuard Home's official installer from SSH by copying and pasting from the worksheet or typing the following. You will verify an error-free install by copying and pasting from the worksheet or typing the following. At this point, you are going to complete the setup of AdGuard Home from a web browser. First, you'll navigate to your AdGuard Home's IP on port 3000. Then, you'll click Get Started. Then you'll scroll down and click next. Then you will create a username and password and record them on your printed worksheet. Then you will click next. And then you will click next again. Then you will click open dashboard. Finally, you will enter your credentials from number four and click sign in. Please note that subsequent logins to the AdGuard web interface will just be to the IP in the browser address without port 3000. Step five, set your router to use AdGuard Home. On your router, and these are the generic steps, you will go to your LAN or DHCP settings. You will find the DNS server fields for the DHCP clients, and you'll set the primary DNS to be your AdGuard Home's IP. You will leave the secondary DNS blank to force clients to use AdGuard Home. You will save or apply, and then you will reboot one client device or renew its DHCP lease. To confirm that it's using AdGuard Home from the rebooted client in a console window, you will copy and paste or type the following. If it's able to resolve an address through your AdGuard Home, it's working. Then you can verify in the AdGuard Home web UI under DNS queries that the DNS query for dadtheengineer.com was serviced by your AdGuard Home. Congratulations, AdGuard Home is filtering a request for your whole network now. This next step is optional. If you don't want to use third-party DNS resolvers, you can install Unbound to locally resolve DNS requests. Step six, adding Unbound and configuring AdGuard Home to use Unbound. To install Unbound from SSH, you'll copy and paste and execute the following statements, one at a time, from the worksheet. To configure Unbound, copy and paste from the worksheet or type the following. When the nano editor opens, you will paste in this configuration from the worksheet. To exit, you'll press Ctrl X and select Yes to save. 
Next, you will enable and restart Unbound. You'll copy and paste and execute the following statements one at a time from the worksheet. To test Unbound directly on the Pi, you will copy and paste from the worksheet or type the following. Now, we'll set AdGuard Home to use Unbound. First, you'll log into the AdGuard Home web UI, go to DNS settings, and go to Upstream DNS servers. You will copy and paste the following. The next line should specify your router's IP address, which you should have from step three. Click Apply. Verify in the AdGuard web UI. You'll check top upstreams in the dashboard to confirm that queries are going to 127.0.0.1 port 5335. That's it. You're done. See, that wasn't hard. As with the pie hole, using a single instance of AdGuard Home presents a single point of failure. Unlike Pi-Hole, however, AdGuard Home gives you the ability to have some fault tolerance as it relates to a failure with Unbound. You can actually specify a fallback DNS server in the event that AdGuard Home can't reach Unbound. That's a nice feature, but it only guards against a single type of failure. If you want true high availability, you're going to need more than one AdGuard Home instance. This is easy and can cost as little as $20 more. If you are interested in going just a little bit further, you can set up a fault tolerant high uptime configuration with two AdGuard Home instances that automatically synchronize their configurations. Aside from repeating the steps from this video, it's less than five minutes of additional work to get the twin AdGuard Home instances working together. If you want that video, please let me know in the comments below. I will count the individual comments and not the likes to figure out if making that video is a good use of time. For what it's worth, high availability configurations are a good idea if you don't live alone. All that said though, Raspberry Pis are very reliable, so having just one shouldn't be a problem. Maintenance and backups. Just like you take on the expectation of maintenance when you buy a car, you do the same when you make even simple projects like this. Edgard Home is low maintenance, but it's not zero maintenance. The companion dock on my site has a section for maintenance and backup, and the section is on the screen now. My recommendations are to use the update commands every month or two and to export and email yourself a backup of the settings whenever you make configuration changes to your AdGuard Home. AdGuard Home is much nicer than PyHole when it comes to selecting and using popular block lists. That said, you still need to select lists that are well suited to your particular use case. There were a number of questions that came up after the PyHole tutorial and most of them apply to AdGuard setup too. I encourage you to check out the PyHole Part 2 video to see the issues raised, along with the topics like bad routers, rogue devices bypassing your AdGuard home filtering, and accessing your AdGuard home from your mobile devices when you're away from your LAN. Depending on how far you decided to follow this tutorial, you should at least have a Raspberry Pi running AdGuard home on your network. Hopefully, you were also able to set a static IP or IP address reservation for your device and change your router's DNS settings. If you were not able to accomplish this part, let me know what make and model of router you have in the comments below, as well as where you got stuck. If you were able to successfully configure your router, I hope you didn't stop there. Unbound is less than five minutes of additional work and it's completely worth it. And that's really about as much as I think I can fit into a single tutorial without confusing anyone. If you encountered issues, let me know in the comments and I will do my best to help. And with that, congratulations. You loaded Linux on a little computer. You loaded a piece of open source software from a command line and reclaimed a bit of your privacy and reduced the ads you'll see. That sounds like a mission accomplished to me, and I hope you found it interesting and gratifying. Please share in the comments if you succeeded, how far you went, and if you ran into any issues. If you found this video interesting or helpful, hit like, subscribe, and share this with anyone else that hates ads too. If you want to support my work, then please hype this video and consider becoming a member. I'm not a big deal, so it's really cheap. Depending on the tier, we can hang out on Discord, so there's that. And while I hate to ask for money, these videos take a surprising amount of time to make, and the more specific they get, the fewer people watch them. And speaking of members, I want to thank my new members, James, Mark, Ryan, Andrew, Richard, Jack, Michael, John, and Rick for their support. It helps make these videos possible. Any paid members as of the 21st of December will automatically be entered to win the Raspberry Pi raffle with four prizes, including two Raspberry Pis. I'll announce the winners on a channel post. Thanks and have a great and ad-free day.